Sounds like a speaking spell. Of course, it sounds like a speaking spell. Have you not seen Back to the Future? Welcome home, Marty. Hey, hey, hey. Dad's home. That's right. He's home. Dad's home. Lord of the Manor. Hello, hello. King of the Castle. I gave it that MP3 file very specifically so that it would do that every time it saw this face. And you know what else I made it do? If it doesn't recognize anybody's face, it does this. Get out of my goddamn house, you son of a bitch. I am calling the police. I don't, I don't recognize that particular message from Back to the Future. However, you could make it play any MP3 you like. You could make it play the Back to the Future ringtone every time it saw my face. And now that's a thing forever. So believe it or not, this is a smart home hub. It's actually a really good smart home hub. It's got Zigbee built in, it's got Thread built in, it's got Matter support, face recognition. It can be connected to either your Wi-Fi or your Ethernet, depending on your preference. This is a really good smart home hub. If you don't know what that means, in short, it just means it's future-proofed. It works with Amazon Alexa, it works with Google Home, it works with Apple HomeKit, it works with Home Assistant. So this is quite an exciting one because what you're looking at right now is Home Assistant. That's the Home Assistant RTSP feed. What on earth? How is it that fast? It's totally ridiculous. And this is the camera here, like, right? Camera's just here on my desk. And, uh, yeah, that's just completely insane. And it's got all of the future smart home protocols required to make sure that it lasts a good long time, no matter which ecosystem you move to. It also means that I can actually get the contact sensor in my shed that monitors whether or not the door is open or closed connected to my smart home ecosystem, even though it's miles away, because this thing is a Zigbee hub on the outside of my house. Hey, stupid, you left the shed door open again. With all that said, this is a sponsored review, but I'm going to be as honest with you guys as I was with Luke Skywalker. Your father wanted you to have this when you were old enough. Listen, mate. This guy's mental. He, he cut your dad's legs off, nicked his lightsaber, now he's trying to give it you as a gift. It's full of shit. Now you might be thinking, this smart home hub looks suspiciously like an outdoor camera. And that's because it is. This is Akara's first ever IP65 waterproof camera for sticking outside. And it just so happens to be one of the best outdoor cameras I've tried so far because it doesn't have to connect to Akara's ecosystem. It works with Apple's HomeKit Secure Video. It works with NVRs from third parties because it uses the RTSP protocol. It can record to its own internal SD card all from the future here, you can tell because I'm wearing futuristic clothing. So I have taken this thing apart and interestingly, there's not actually an SD card in here. It's 32 gigabytes of inbuilt memory, which means that no burglar would be able to actually steal the SD card. They'd have to steal the physical camera itself. They can't just pop something open and take it out, which means taking it off the wall and it's actually very, very sturdy, uh, which is cool. But even if they did steal the camera, there's actually a backup for that too. Talk about that in a minute. In, in the past. Paul Paul from the past will talk about that in a minute. But then also back it up across FTP to your Synology NAS, for example. But even if the burglar broke into your house and stole your NVR system and stole your FTP server and stole the camera itself, you would still have the footage backed up to the cloud entirely for free. 
Because Akara do free cloud storage that goes in 12 second clips onto their server every time it detects movement. This is a no subscription required thing that actually for an interface rivals that of Nest which would cost you X number of pounds every single month of your life for the rest of your goddamn life. I don't know why I threw a goddamn in there, I'm excited. <laughs> This is an entirely subscription-free product unless you want it to be subscription-based. You can actually pay for a subscription and get all the bells and whistles on top of everything I've just discussed, such as up to 2K resolution for your camera's storage, 90 days of video history, SMS and email alarm notifications, continuous recording, key events filtering, daily snapshots, and 90 days of storage. And this service is actually quite competitively priced considering you can add up to 99 cameras to the cloud. This is $9.99 a month in dollars or $99.99 per year in dollars. There's still loads of cool things to tell you about this yet. It does so much more than this, but first of all, I have to just reiterate, this is an Akara outdoor camera that works with other people's NVR systems. This is Akara going out of their way to become as open as humanly possible, and I couldn't be more excited. I am just about as excited as that Amazon delivery driver was that discovered those treats on his round. Oh. <laughs> It'd be a crying shame for someone to superimpose a fart into that footage, wouldn't it? Heck, Luke. That's in about me. Image quality wise, this thing is astounding. I've been comparing it rather unfairly to my current reigning champion, the Reolink Atlas PT Ultra. And this is a camera that is the same price as the Akara G5 Pro, but. It doesn't have any of the smart home functionality. It is not a smart home hub. Granted, it is a PTZ camera, and of course that has its own advantages, but the weirdest part about all this is that the Akara camera is ridiculously wide angled. You've got a field of vision of 133 degrees, and that makes the picture utterly massive. Now, there's no denying that the image quality during the day on the Reolink camera is much better than the Akara camera, but, when you actually compare the two at night with their spotlights on, the Akara camera actually suffers with less bleaching than the Reolink. You could easily argue that the Akara picture at night time is actually clearer than the Reolink camera, despite the fact that the Reolink camera has nearly twice the resolution. People might well complain that the price of the Akara camera is quite high for a non-PTZ camera, but when you take into account the smart home functionality and the actual performance output that you're getting from this image, you probably want to consider the possibility that this is actually worth the money. Particularly if you're an Apple HomeKit user that's been looking for a PoE camera that does Apple HomeKit secure video, because this is pretty much the only one on the market. I shouldn't imagine this is the best, most professional picture in the world. Um, I just wanted to say very quickly in this very gorilla style, it can still see the picture even though the camera is a million miles away from the router. The range on this thing is probably the best I've had so far. Uh, it's a miracle that it's able to get any picture at all. It's not performing great, but yeah, there's an image and that's nuts. Second of all, um, the spotlight is so, so bright. Check this out, look. <laughs> that's just horrendous. With that spotlight out, there's no, there's nothing. Just check this out. Let me, let me cut the power to this thing. Computer, show the test camera. Wh what? It can't be that fast. And the reaction time on it is mental. Look at that. What on earth? It's in like real time.
Okay, so <laughs> that reaction time might be reason enough for me to want to move my entire stuff all back to a car. So <laughs> I had the Acara doorbell a while ago and I swapped it out for Reolink when I decided I was going to move all of my cameras to Reolink. But that reaction time and the reaction time of the notifications for this thing... <laughs> And the reaction time for loading this feed on the app is <laughs> so fast are so blisteringly fast i have never seen anything like it and i think as i say oh man akara if you're watching this which i hope you are i would really like it if you please released some ptz cameras and maybe cameras that cost a bit more but have even better visuals because the visuals on this thing are decent enough but it's that reaction time and the speed that it loads on my Fire TV that's making me want to switch. And this is the wireless version. <laughs> Just in case I hadn't been clear on that, this is the wireless version of the camera with those reaction times. The PLE version would likely be even faster. We're talking like split second response times as it is. You can customize the notifications you receive for pets and people and vehicles and packages. And we're talking about end-to-end -end encryption for Apple Trust. If Apple have partnered with these guys for the whole Apple HomeKit secure video thing, then you know you can trust this feed. I don't trust it! I don't trust you! And the toaster needs to stop looking at me! With all that said, it wouldn't be a very balanced review if I just told you the good things. So, here as usual is... This guy. It doesn't support on Viv. I want to talk to the manager. Okay, one second. Hi, how can I help you? What the f- It only supports RTSP, which means that I can't connect these cameras to my Reolink NVR, for example, because the Reolink NVR doesn't support RTSP. It only supports Omvit. That's a huge shame. In a similar vein, it doesn't do continuous recording to your NAS either. If you use the FTP option, as I have to send the footage to my Synology NAS, what it actually does is it backs up the 12 second motion recordings, not continuous recording. There is a way around this, of course, you could use VLC Media Player on a computer, use that to stream the RTSP feed, and then record the RTSP feed going forwards, but personally, I don't think that's a good solution. I would really rather that you could do continuous recording to the NAS, or better yet, do on VIF recording so that I could get it to my... Reolink MVR. I'm... <laughs> my re I wish it could send footage to my Reolink MVR. That's how upset I am. That's how upset I am. I can't even remember my lines. The Amazon Alexa functionality is mildly disappointing. What I really wanted to do was create a routine that meant when I said the magic words, it would disable the cameras so I could go out and mow my lawn or play in the back garden. I don't play in the back garden. I'm an adult. I have no joy in my life. Um, but what I could do instead is use an Akara button and actually create a routine that has this at the back door and when it's pressed, it disables the cameras. When it's double pressed, it re-enables the cameras. It's not that big of a deal because Akara's ecosystem is so cool. On that note, they probably do the best security alarm system I have ever seen of any smart home system because you have the ability in the app to disable the alarm or enable the alarm or set home mode or night mode or even away mode. And you can decide what these individual modes do. So, I don't know, for example, I'll have the home mode disable all of the cameras in the property, but I have the away mode and the night mode enable the outside and the indoor cameras. I can also automate all of that. I can have it so that those modes will switch based on the time of the day or the press of a button. And now some weird ones. So, the spotlight seems to stay on all the time if you turn it on. It doesn't just come on at night or come on when there's motion, it just stays on forever. A bit annoying. You can, again, automate this so that the spotlight will come on at 7pm or at sundown, for example. So, it's not really that big of a problem, it's just weird that they haven't made it so that it will automatically come on during motion and only during motion. 
Uh, as a Zigbee hub, it only pairs to Akara's Zigbee devices. You probably realize this already if you watch the channel regularly. Akara's ecosystem is not really their fault. It's not like they intentionally lock it down. It's just that their system doesn't have drivers built for third-party devices. If you want to use it as an Akara Zigbee hub, it's great. If you want to use it as a Zigbee hub for third parties, it doesn't work. It also only has color night vision. It doesn't have infrared, so if you're looking for the whole black and white thing, it doesn't do that. Thankfully, the color night vision is awesome, but it does require that spotlight, so that's worth noting. There's no solar panel option, and apparently they have no intention of bringing one yet. Uh, I think, you know, maybe it'll be on the cards if enough of you complain in the comments section. I mean, really, solar panel would be incredible. That might have seemed like a long list, but most of those are tiny details that you can work around. And I have to say, if it's not clear already, this is easily the best smart home camera I have ever tried. The Reolink stuff might have better picture quality, but this has way, way better functionality. And the speed of the notifications and the speed that it loads the feed are enough to make me want to switch. If you're interested in these cameras, as I said, as usual, there are links in the description as to where you can pick one up. All that's left to do is to thank my amazing patrons, without whom I'd still be working in a call center. And I know I say that every week, but it's truer every week. Without those guys or the people that I'm thanking personally this week, which is Sean, Gilchrist, and Mathis, I, I just, I don't know what I'd be doing, but it wouldn't be this. If you want to be like those guys or those guys, you can do that at either Patreon or buy me a one-off beer at PayPal. And either way, I will genuinely love you forever. These are my Facebooks and my X's and my threads and my Instagrams and my TikToks. Come and hang out there or give me your best friends. See you next time.